Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Heithouse. Welcome to a science adventure. A big part of my work is looking at how predators impact their prey from where they live to what they eat. It's called the ecology of fear, and it's one way that predators can keep ecosystems healthy and in balance. Our work in the ocean showed us that tiger sharks totally change where big grazers like sea cows and sea turtles feed, and the types of seagrasses they eat. Basically, sharks protect the seagrass that forms the foundation of the entire ecosystem. Without sharks, the whole system could collapse. But what about on land? Dr. Aaron Worsing is one of my good friends, and he's trying to figure this out. He and graduate student Justin Dellinger are working with some pretty awesome animals in a pretty spectacular location. And guess what? They need your help. The team's study site is in a remote corner of Washington State near the small town of Republic. It's a lush forest habitat where rivers cut through the mountainous landscape forming deep valleys and steep cliffs. Perfect home for some amazing creatures like bighorn sheep, coyotes, elk, and owls. But our team is here to study the most abundant large herbivores in the area, the white-tailed deer and the mule deer. In the past, both deer species had to figure out how to get a meal without becoming one. Wolves used to be common in this part of the country, and one of their favorite foods was deer. But wolves were driven out of Washington by humans that didn't want them eating their livestock. And for years, the deer haven't had to worry about wolves. But now things are changing. Wolves are back. How will deer respond? To find out, our team is here in the heart of winter, when food is scarce, and wolves are at their most deadly. Our study site is incredibly remote. That means that it enables us to study wolf-deer interactions in a fairly natural setting. Working in collaboration with the Confederated Colville tribes, the team knows from years of previous tracking data that wolf packs have reappeared in two areas, and they spend most of their time in this location. To survive in this harsh, cold climate, a wolf needs to eat a lot of meat every day to survive. This is constant pressure on the deer population. But does this change the deer's behavior and where they spend their time? If so, how? We need to generate some predictions. But first, we need to talk about predator-prey interactions. They're some of the most important in ecosystems. Predators have to decide what to eat, where to find a meal, and how to catch it. Prey? they do their best not to become lunch while finding some of their own. We can display these predator-prey interactions like this in a food chain. It starts with the primary producers, plants. Deer eat the plants. And then at the top, wolves eat deer. Now to study how deer might respond to wolves, we need to think about biotic and abiotic factors. Biotic are living factors, like plants. Deer should look for places where they can find the most food. But are they avoiding the best feeding grounds to stay safe from wolves? Abiotic factors are non-living, like mountains or rivers. White-tailed deer can run fastest and escape wolves where the ground is flat. Mule deer are more agile and can evade wolves by finding broken ground with lots of obstacles. So do the deer worry about where they spend their time? To learn if and how they respond to both of these factors, the team has to catch some deer. The team sets up a series of deer traps in different areas around the habitat. Just a little bit, giving them a taste of the good stuff that they're missing. And some old rotten apples, finishing all off molasses. Sort of like a deer sundae, they love it. While the team waits on the traps, I need you to develop hypotheses and predictions of where deer should spend their time to get the most food or to stay safe from predators. Excellent work. Now we have our best guesses of what whitetail and mule deer will do if they are just out for a meal or if they respond to wolves in different ways. We can test your ideas if we ever catch a few deer. Along the way, the team comes across a telltale sign that wolves are in the area. That's a big, uh, big print, claw marks. That's, uh, that's a wolf, pretty cool. With wolves in the area, the team uses a VHF signal to check the traps. No luck right now. But their luck is about to change in the non-wolf location. 
and pay dirt. So it looks like we have a deer in one of our traps, so we're gonna actually head down the road a few kilometers and check it out. Got a deer. The team must move fast. A stressed deer could injure itself inside the trap. This is the best way to capture deer to minimize stress to the animals. First up, weigh the animal. The ear tag helps identify her again from a distance. Surprisingly, a deer can overheat and die even in the dead of winter. A snow blanket should keep her cool. This yeah. blood sample can tell us a lot. What it's been eating, whether it's pregnant, and if it's stressed. This is Mady Bakhtieri, engineer extraordinaire and inventor of cameras that can be deployed on just about any kind of animal. Now it's time to deploy deer cam. This system will stay on the animal for two weeks and record what the deer's eating and where it spends its time. Finish work up on deer, release. Let's work. <laughs> work. Nice job. There was more than a camera in that package we put on the deer, and we're getting data on deer locations beamed back to us. Let's test your hypotheses about deer use of their habitat. Great job. With the cameras back, now we can see what the deer have been up to. We want to know what plants the deer are eating and how much time they spend feeding. When predators are around, you want to keep your eyes open to see danger before it gets too close. And that means less time to eat. Have a look. The deer's digging through the snow to get to the plants underneath. This one's eating some sticks and twigs. That's called browsing. And sometimes in the winter, that's the best you can do. Check it out. This deer stopped eating. It's lifted its head and it's scanning the habitat for wolves. We call this behavior vigilance. Okay, time for a snooze. Here we go, here's some more foraging. This looks a lot different than the other deer we were looking at. In this area without wolves, it sure looks like the mule deer and white-tailed deer are doing the same thing, but we'll have to analyze the data to be sure. When we combine the data from these cameras with experiments Aaron and the team are doing to see if deer can change the makeup of the plants in an area, we can see if wolves are a keystone species, one that has a huge impact on an entire ecosystem. That's your job now. Great job, team. Today you've helped us learn how important wolves are to the ecosystem here in Washington and how animals are influenced by the biotic and abiotic environment. These are important things to know because predators around the world are in trouble and people are changing the environment. But we can help restore nature's balance with information from studies like the one you just did. Thanks for your help. Stay tuned for your next science adventure.